With that out of the way, let's move on to the dirty underbelly of the corporate finance world with what's known as toxic or flawless convertible debt. This type of arrangement is basically a free check to the lender at you, the shareholder's expense, and it can get very ugly very quick. Welcome back. Do you own shares in a company that has convertible or hybrid debt on its balance sheet? Today we'll talk about how this surprisingly common financing option for companies, often a last resort, sometimes sends them bankrupt, or at the very least it will significantly impact the value of your shares in what's known as a financing death spiral. Companies, particularly startups, speculative and small caps, need access to capital in order to grow. The problem with these kind of companies is that their business model may be unproven and they may have little to no cash flow. This is part of what makes them so risky. And as such, this is why we see that a basket of small caps generally outperforms a basket of large caps over the long term. It's an investor's reward for the added risk taken in these ventures. There are many ways for a company to raise capital and source funds for its operations, such as offering shares in a capital raising or raising money for a bond but sometimes a company will exhaust these options of financing. On the ASX and other markets, there are limits to how much a company can raise on the public markets without special shareholder approval. Sometimes they won't have the cash flows to support a standard bond or debt offering because lenders consider them to be too risky. So when conventional means of raising money are off the table in a last ditch effort to stay afloat, some companies will opt to secure funds in any way they can. One of these ways is through the issuance of convertible debt. It may be sold to investors by the board and the CEO as a great way to finance the company to get off its feet and grow revenues, but more often than not, it can do far more harm than good. First, we're going to talk about standard convertible bonds, which arguably aren't that bad for a company, but then we're going to move on to what's known as toxic or flawless convertible bonds. So here's how it works. You have a company, we'll say a coffee chain, and in this example, it's worth $20 million at a share price of $1 per share. So a market cap of $20 million with 20 million shares on issue. Management agrees to issue convertible debt for $10 million. So the lender or investor provides the much needed capital upfront to the company to continue its operations. Now the thing about convertible or hybrid debt, as the name may suggest, is that it has qualities that make it similar to a bond, yet also similar to equity. So initially these $10 million would look like a standard old bond. The company is on the hook for interest payments once a month until the bond is matured after say several years. So nothing unusual here. The hybrid element is introduced because there's a clause in the agreement that allows this bondholder, this lender, to convert this debt into equity at its discretion. Usually for every $1,000 in face value of the bond, that's every $1,000 that is lent to the company, that will carry with it the option to convert this debt into a predetermined amount of shares. So in our coffee shop example, let's say for every $1,000 of convertible debt taken on, the lender is allowed to convert this into 1,000 shares at any time. Let's look at two different scenarios. First, let's say the share price at the date of issuance and for the following three years is below $1. So we've got 10 million worth of debt convertible into less than 10 million worth of shares, minus a few years worth of interest payments. Now let's look at a separate example where the share price rises to say $2 per share. Over time, the lender converts these $1,000 batches of debt into 1,000 shares until the whole $10 million worth of debt is converted into shares. The lender has given up $10 million in debt, but replaced it with 10 million shares, now valued at $20 million. All in all, the company is better off because it used the funds to continue its operations and the lender got a great deal because it doubled its money. Some of these types of financing give the company the right to convert the bond into equity shares or keep the bond as a fixed income investment until it matures. If a bond is converted, it's done so at a preset price and conversion ratio. So all of this seems a perfectly well and good and legitimate way to raise capital and it has pros and cons for both parties. Just one more thing before we move on to what's known as death spiral financing. Let's just say for argument's sake that this company could have issued 10 million shares at a dollar per share in a standard capital raise. Yes, the shares on issue would have gone up 50% to 30 million, but all things equal, the market cap would have gone up 50% as well to $30 million. With that out of the way, let's move on to the dirty underbelly of the corporate finance world with what's known as toxic or flawless convertible debt. This type of arrangement is basically a free check to the lender at you, the shareholder's expense, and it can get very ugly very quick. 
Now with a normal hybrid debt, we have say $1,000 of face value debt convertible to a fixed number of shares. In our last example, we used 1,000 shares per $1,000 of debt. Now the way flawless hybrid debt works is, similarly to normal hybrid debt, the lender commits that upfront capital to the company, but instead of each $1,000 worth of debt being converted to a fixed number of shares, it can be converted to a fixed value of shares. And to sweeten the deal and make it viable for the lender, the shares can be issued at a discount to the current share price. I haven't talked about the volume weighted average price or VWAP before, but it's a common way that equity offerings are made with conventional equity raisings and hybrid securities. So say over the last 30 days or so for this public company, every trade that occurs is going to have two things. The amount of shares for that transaction, in other words the volume, and the price that those shares traded at. So the crash course on VWAP is that it's a formula to determine the average of those transactions over some time frame. And how toxic convertibles usually work is that we'll have the VWAP, say it starts at a dollar with our last example, and this debt can be converted at say 15% below VWAP. Say this bondholder has $1,000 of hybrid debt, they can then convert this into about 1,176 shares. Now they have $1,000 worth of shares, but issued at a discount. Now let's pause here and ask what do you think happens next? Given the context that only the most financially distraught companies would issue hybrid debt in this manner, chances are that there's a very thin book of buyers and sellers on the market. So what happens next? Well, you best believe that the bondholder will go straight to market and sell these shares. And what is the effect of this? Well, now that this company, through the issuance of this debt, they have artificially created a steady stream of shares which will immediately go and get sold on market. Time and time again, we see how this plays out with small cap companies and companies with low liquidity. Over time, the share price is decimated and what makes it sting even more is that over time, this sinks the VWAP lower and lower. Say a month into this operation, the share price sinks to 75 cents and the VWAP is about 80 cents. The new conversion rate for the shares is 68 cents and now every $1,000 of debt gets converted into about 1,470 shares. Effectively, as the share price sinks lower and lower, the rate of dilution accelerates. The shareholders get smashed in two ways. They're getting diluted more and more every day and their capital erodes as the price sinks. Now for the cherry on top. Experienced traders will pay attention to these kinds of operations and know that there is a significant chance of the share price going lower. So they go short on the company, cratering the share price even more. This company, which could have initially diluted the shares by only 50%, has now effectively committed to diluting shareholders far, far more than this. All for only $10 million in capital. In the end, the lender gets away with corporate murder, the management high-five each other because they raise enough money to keep the business running and extract another year's worth of payroll. Sponsored by you, the shareholder, who arguably got absolutely fleeced in this arrangement. And this is why it's known as death spiral financing and lenders of these kinds of instruments are basically the loan sharks of the corporate world. Have you ever owned a company that has convertible debt on its balance sheet? I'd be interested to hear your experience with that company in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.